ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಡಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಗುರುವೇ ಸರ್ವೋಕಾಂ ವಿಷಜೇಪವರೋಗಿ ಹೃದಯ ಸರ್ವಿದ್ಯಾಂ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣಾಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಅಪಾರ ಕರುಣಾಸಿಂಧು ಜ್ಞಾನಧಂ ಶಾಂತರೂಪಿಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಮುದಾನ್ವಹಂ ಭವಂದೇವಾಸಿ ವರ್ಯಂಚ ಜೀವೋದ್ಧಾರಣ ತತ್ಪರಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಯೇಂದ್ರ ಗುರು ಪೂಜ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಮುದಾನ್ವಹಂ ಚತುರ್ದಶ ವಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಸಂನ್ಯಾಸಂ ಸುಮಹಾಮತಿ ನಮಿ ಶಂಕರಾರಂಭಂ ಶಿವಜೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮತಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ವಾಚನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಂಚಿ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಪೀಠಾಧಿಪತಿ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶರಣಯೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾತ್ರಿಪುರ ಸುಂದರಿ ಸಮೇತ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಂದ್ರಮೌಳೀಶ್ವರ ನಮಃ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಮದಗಿ ಲಭು ಮಂಡಲಾಲಂಕಾರ ತ್ರಯಸ್ತ್ರಿಂಶತ್ ಕೋಟಿ ದೇವತಾ ಸೇವಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಮಾಕ್ಷಿ ದೇವಿ ಸನಾಥ ಶ್ರೀಮದೆ ಕಾಮ್ರನಾಥ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾದೇವಿ ಸನಾಥ ಹಸ್ತಿಗಿರಿನಾಥ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರ ಪರಮಾಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಸತ್ಯವ್ರತ ನಾಮಾಂಕಿತ ಕಾಂಚಿ ದಿವ್ಯ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರೆ ಶಾರದಾಮ ಸುಸ್ಥಿತ ಅತುಲಿತ ಸುಧಾರ ಸಮಾಧುರ್ಯ ಕಮಲಾಸಿನ ಕಾಮಿ ಧಮ್ಮಿಲ್ಲ ಸಂಫುಲ್ಲ ಮಲ್ಲಿಕಾ ಮಾಲಿಕಾ ನಿಶ್ಚಂದ ಮಕರಂದ ಜರಿ ಸೌವಸ್ತಿಕ ವಾಂಗ್ನಿ ಕುಂಭ ವಿಜೃಂಭಣಾನಂದ ದುಂದಿರಿದ ಮನೀಷಿ ಮಂಡಲ ಅನ್ನವರದ ದ್ವೈತ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿನೋದ ರಸಿಕಾಂ ನಿರಂತರ ಅಲಂಕೃತೀಕೃತ ಶಾಂತಿ ದಾಂತಿ ಭೂಮ ಸಕಲ ಭವನ ಚಕ್ರ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾಪಕ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಕ್ರ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾ ವಿಖ್ಯಾತ ಯಶೋಲಂಕೃತ ನಿಖಿಲ ಪಾಷಂಡ ಷಂಡ ಕಂಟಕೋತ್ಪಾಡನೇನ ವಿಷದೀಕೃತ ವೇದ ವೇದಾಂತ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಷಣ್ಮದ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾಪಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಿವ್ರಾಜಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಮಂತಶಂಕರ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನೆ ಸಿಂಹಾಸನಾಭಿಷಕ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಸಂಯಮೀಂದ್ರ ಅಂತೇ ವಾಸಿ ವರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮ ಜಯೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದ ತದಂತೇ ವಾಸಿ ವರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಂಕರ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದ ಚರಣನಯನಯೋ ಸಪ್ರಚಯ ಸಾಂಜಲಿ ಬಂಧನ್ ಚ ನಮಸ್ಕುರ್ಮ ಹರಿಯೋ ಕಾಂಚಿ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಸೇವಾ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಮಿಡ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಒಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ಮಂಡಳಿ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೇಷಿಯಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಕಟಕ ಮಾಸಂ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವೇರ್ ದ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ಮಂಡಳಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಗೋ ವಿತ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹಾಲಿನಸ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಗಳು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ವೈಭೇದ ಪಂಡಿತ ಅಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಿಡ್ಸ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಲೋಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗರ್ಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಚಾತುರ್ಮಾಸಿ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಇನ್ ಕಾಕಿನಾಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಸೊ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಒಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಡಿ ಮಾಸಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಚಾತುರ್ಮಾಸಿ ಪ್ರಥಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಂದರೇಶ್ ಎನ್ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಅ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಮಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯ ಮಾಮ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಏಡ್ಸ್ ಏಷ್ಯಾ ಎನ್ವೈರ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಹಿ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡೋ ಅಮೆರಿಕನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಡೋ ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಷನಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಮೆನಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್
Later, he taught basic Sanskrit in a series of 12 lessons over weekends. He made the learning easy with colorful slides showing the text in Devanagari with English trans transliterations. He launched innovative global online learning programs that included Easy Sanskrit for Adults and Kids, a six month weekend series called Sangeeta, Sanskrit plus Gita, Introduction to the Upanishads, The Glory of Vishnu Sasanam, and many more. In 2021, he conducted a series of six online lectures, each on the essentials of Sanatana Dharma and the glory of the great goddess Devi for the Chicago Kalibari Temple. Spread over 29 online sessions, he also taught Devi Mahatmyam in Tamil. Currently, he conducts a monthly online discourse on Narita Sasanam for the Shingeri Vidya Bharati Foundation in Detroit. So far, he has over 200 YouTube videos that has 24,000 subscribers. His website, he, easyhinduism.com provides details of his varied spiritual activities. He can be reached at gurujesubi at gmail.com. Without further ado, I turn it over to Sri Subramanian Mama. Hari Om. ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಾಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂಸ್ಮತ್ಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತೇವೃತ್ಯು
इसे तमसोमा ज्योति कमय इसे लीड अस फ्रॉम डार्क नाइट्स टू लाइट आर फ्रॉम अज्ञाना टू ज्ञाना सो योर गुरु इज वन हु शेड्स लाइट आर ज्ञाना ऑन हिज डिसिप्लिन्स सो बीइंग अ गुरु is primarily about inward greatness you know something which we cannot really see a guru need not even teach or give upadesha one could uh, just be a bauna guru like the original guru of all ultimate guru adi guru dakshinamurti you can see the picture here you know dakshinamurti so he is considered to be the adi guru you have this adi guru picture on this side he is sitting quietly very silent medaye sarva vidyanam vishase bhavaroginam gurave sarva lokanam dakshina murtaye namaha so dakshina murti is an avatar of shiva and he is regarded as स्टोर हाउस ऑफ नॉलेज such a guru sarvalokanam one who is a guru for all the world dakshinamurti namaha namaskaram to dakshinamurti dakshina itself is south he is facing the south direction to the god who is facing the south direction we are offering namaskaram you can see he is sitting under a, a tree with his tapamala and sitting quietly along with the around so that is the greatness of uh, rakshana murti who is silent but gives knowledge without speaking so having started with his namaskarams to the divine guru uh, let me go further now basically my presentation is going to be in two parts part 1 i will give you a description of what happened much before our most proud guru adi shankara came in the guru parampara much of what i am going to say is covered in devathin kural volume 5 and what mahaparivara has said in his lectures at various places including sanskrit college and other places part 2 will be on what took place after adi shankara's avatar so that is the way i would like to split my uh, presentation and let's start on uh, part 1 with the verse i recited at the beginning which says sadhasiva samarambam sankaracharya madhyamam asmat acharya parjantam bande guru paramparam it all begins with sadhasiva sadhasiva samarambha samarambha means in the, in the beginning adi shankaracharya shankaracharya madhyamam is the middle asmata acharya from up to my own acharyas i go with reverence to the entire tradition of guru guru par vande guru parampara not only one guru but the entire parampara parampara means genius so in starting this sadashiva samarambha we are going to talk about all the gurus so in this slide you will find there is a tree of gurus there are many gurus and guru paramparas you know you have buddha you have mahavir jain you have guru gobind singh and so on and so on so each have a parampara of their own but we shall confine ourselves to the great advaita guru parampara the parampara in which adi shankara comes in the middle so in this verse which you see here we salute we offer namaskaram to all the prominent gurus of advaita starting from narayana through adi shankara 
and his disciples up to the acharyas of today you know it's very interesting to see that advaita guru starts with shriman narayana who is none else but vishnu even today our kanchi kam koti pitam guru put their seal as narayana smriti and our gurus when giving prasadam they say narayana narayana and you also know that adi shankara wrote bhaja govindam right so in this class you have narayanam padbhavam vasishtam satyam cha tat putra parasaram cha vyasam sukham gaurapatam mahantam govinda yogindra matasya sishyam शंकराचार्य मता पद्म पाद हस्तामलक शिष्य तम तोटक नारायण पद्म अरेजिंग फ्रॉम द नेवल ऑफ विष्णु देन इट इज फॉलोड विद ऋषि परंपरा which includes the disease like vasishta shakti parasara his son vyasa vyasa san sukam and after sukha we turn to the manav parampara that is human rishis or uh, or gurus which includes gaudiya pada govinda bhagavad pada शंकराचार्य पद्म पाद हस्तामलकोटक नारायण अवर ग्रेट कांची महापरी Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva are also on the top, and you see the rishis on the sides. So they are all in the Guru Parampara of Martas, who are followers of Shankara Bhagavad Pada. Very interesting that none in the Guru Parampara up to Sukha, and in fact, including Sukha, had occupied the Sanyasa Ashrama. Generally, we believe that all the gurus should be sannyasi, right? But here, starting with Bhagavan Narayana until Sukhacharya, none of the people in our guru tradition, guru parampara, were sannyasis. Generally, we tend to think they are sannyasis, but they are not. None of them had clean seven heads. They ever wore kadi vastram or cut off the poodal. Even the silent first guru. such dakshina murti they were not sanyasi so they did not change their names or sanyasi change their names once you have the purvashrama and another ashrama comes in they generally have two names one purvashrama name and one sanyasi name but they were all personification of spiritual wisdom brahma jnana and they were all great teachers of the sacred brahma vidya as you call it today in kali yuga it is not appropriate to preach superior knowledge if one remained in the grahastharma so the tradition of people began that once you want to go into a guru then you take a sanyasrama and it really started with gaudapada whose original name and sanyasa names are not clearly known we don't know that. He saw in the first verse, Sada Shiva is the first guru, right? Sada Shiva Samarabha, and the second one, what we see here is Narayana or Vishnu. Now, what is the connection between the two, between Sada Shiva and Vishnu? So let's go on to the next slide. First, let us start with Shiva. you all know that shiva is called nataraja right he is the supreme dancer the mahapariva says nataraja is another name for parameshwara amongst natan vitan and kayan natan is the dancer 
the king of all the natans is nataraja it means that nobody can dance better than nataraja he is called maharatan in tamil he also called ambala kootadu van the many of you might have visited uh, chidambaram it is called sanga sabai or golden sabai it is all dance in sabas and you have the another place madurai where it is veldi sabai or silver sabai and in tiruvalangadu you have rathana sabai gems in tirunelveli thavara sabai or brass sabai and finally kutralam is called chitra sabai so in all this the chidambaram temple is unique because from one place in the mandapam you can have darshan of both nataraja and govind raja who is vishnu very unique vishnu as govind raja is living is on the bed of adisesha uh in fact uh, uh riva quotes appa dikshitar having a darshan of both shiva and uh, vishnu standing at same place he says ma ramanam uma ramanam ma ramanam ma means lakshmipati and uma ramanam means umapati just by seeing the temple of chidambaram we can understand the link between shiva and vishnu So, what is the relationship? Special relationship. It's a very close relationship because Nataraja really dances in the heart of Mahavishnu. I'll show you the next slide here. It says, "Shiva ya Vishnu, Rupa ya Shiva, Rupa ya Vishnu ve, Shiva Sagrada yam Vishnu, Vishnu Sagrada yam Shiva ha." Vishnu is also a raja, known as Ranga Raja, the colorful one, and he thinks of Shiva while he is reclining on the bed of Adi Session. So he is enjoying Shiva's dance with great joy, and Adi Session he is suddenly sensing the heaviness. So he uh, asks Vishnu. What happened? Suddenly you become so heavy. I am not even to bear the weight. Tell me what's happening. And Mahavishnu responded, saying, "Shiva is dancing in my heart, and I am enjoying it. So I am jumping up and down. That is the reason for the weight." Now, Adi Sesha, he said, "That is not fair. Only you are enjoying. You are not allowing me to enjoy." i would also like to see she was dance and uh, mahavishnu was just waiting for it yes he says yes you are going to see nataraja in chidambaram in person so you can go and have a darshan he said how do i go i am going to give you an incarnation a human incarnation to go in the bhuloka and then you not only see but you also do some little work you know paninya has written the vyakarana sutra you know it's based on this damaru sound which came from nataraja and he wrote ashtadhyayi which is very difficult for saman uh, eight chapters very difficult for common people to understand that so you write a commentary on that by explaining clearly all the sutra so i said okay then how do i design on bhuloka so there are some versions of it how you designed it i am going to give you one or two of them and uh, uh, first one is there was a, a woman called konika who was performing a, a, a tapas a penance she wanted a satputra and she was offering her argyam you can say water and she kept her hand like this anjali mudra and then adisesha as a baby just falls into her hand pat like that you know as a baby and because she felt with the pat sound when she was doing anjali mudra she named him as patanjali 
no, there is another legend where uh, it says Patanjali was born to Atri and uh, his wife Anusmiya, and therefore one of his names is Atriya. Acharya belonged to the Acharya Atri Gotra. So he had another name called Charaka. So Mahapariva he quotes profusely from the Ramabhadra Dikshita's uh, Patanjali Charitram. He's written maybe about 300 years back. Now, all this nation had taken birth out of his own desire to watch Nataraja's Thandavam. So that wish was completely fulfilled. And as Patanjali, he went to Chidambaram. And living there, he had the darshan of Nataraja all the time and became one of his very prominent devotees. Nataraja is dancing while Sonakar, Patanjali, Vyagarbhadar, other rishis are standing around. You can see the picture here. You can see Patanjali with a, with a snake tail and Vyagarapada with a uh, tiger's uh, feet watching the dance of Nataraja. There are many songs, you know, which describe Nataraja's uh, dance in Chidambaram. I want to give you some samples of it, you know. Very nice songs. One is composed by Gopal Krishna Bhatia, in uh, this certain Vasanta Ragam. Very popular one, which you find in almost all dance uh, arangetrams and programs. A very beautiful, melodious song. Another uh, very popular song, a composition by uh, our famous Paparasam Sivan, which is in Ragam Tamas, you can see. is also dancing. Puli other, other means hide. You know, he's wearing the hide of a, a tiger. And that is also dancing. And Patanjali and Vyagarapada Kan Kudira, they are enjoying the dance. So, Patanjali is very happy there in uh, Chidambaram. He decides to stay there only. And he decides to not only work and uh, do some teaching. He wrote the Vyakarana Mahabhashyam of Sanskrit. And his service uh, did not end there. 
we all know that uh, we have three important things human beings mind is one three important things mind is one walk is another one kayam which is the body which is the mind speech and body more important everybody has it so if there is one person who has done the highest benevolent service for all these three and basic shastras it's only patanjali that is the unique greatness in the guru parampara now these words you see here it is mentioning the great service by him yogena chittasya padena vacham balam sarirasya vaidyakena yo upakartamam pravaram muninam patanjalim pranjali ranatosmi yogena chittasya yoga is for mind chittam is mind the impurities that affect the mind bad thoughts chitta malam is it, call it you know so you have this chitta malam that is got to be removed so that is removed only when there is a kind of medicine which is yoga yoga has been created to clean the dirt in mind it is not a set of exercise alone that is why it begins with yogena chittasya patanjali wrote the yoga sutra which is the basic book for the practice of yoga yoga comes from the root yuj to join to join the jivatma with paramatma so there is the yoga sutra is mostly related to the mind and very small portions devoted to exercises so it's called patanjali yoga sutram it's called yogam because it is controlling the mind and enables the jivatma to unite with paramatma padena vacha padam means vyakaranam means rules of grammar grammar is for vacham speak correctly so nobody could understand pawning his grammar patanjali wrote the bhashyam it is called mahabhashyam for ashtadhyayi which was pawned in his grammar there are many bhashyams but the vyakarana bhashya of patanjali alone is called mahabhashya or the great comment malam sarirasya you know malam means impurity is dirt it can affect all the three the mind speech and action the presence of dirt is disease for all the three so health is present only if dirt is eliminated through medicines right so patanjali wrote charaka samhita that prescribed medicinal remedies malam sarirasya vaidyakena then you have one for the mind one for the speech and one for the physical health so you have mind speech and body all being serviced by patanjali's works and to him patanjali pranjaranatha i am bowing down to patanjali's pranjali anatosmi i am going down with flow pulled at anjali pra anjali ra anatosmi so that is the great thing yoga sutra vyakaranam charaka samhita all the three were written by patanjali you no know, patanjali then started to teach he sat behind the curtain because there were lot of students who were coming and he wanted to teach the mahabhashyam and they all flocked to chidambaram where patanjali was living hundreds of students they learned mahabhashyam and patanjali thought it is better to sit behind him because he wanted to have many mouths and uh, he said i'll take the form of adhisesha so that i can have thousand mouths i can answer the question of all these students at the same time but he will limit poisonous uh, few from the mouth therefore he put a curtain and he taught all of them in the thousand pindered hall in the chidambaram temple which is called vyakarana mandapam interestingly when shiva shiva temples vyakarana mandapam many places so he sat behind the screen and taught but he put two conditions one condition was nobody should leave the hall and if anyone did so he would become a brimber rakshasa and 
the second condition was nobody should try to look behind the screen nobody should remove the screen and see but you know what happened students are curious and some students are dull there was one boy called gouda see so he came from bengal gouda desham they call it and he was a dull witter dull student so he didn't like that lecture and all that so he went out and at the same time one student opened the screen to see what is inside and sight of adhisesha poisonous fumes came and all the students were reduced to ashes immediately and patanjali got really he said what is this happening i thought one teach all these people everybody is dead he got shocked at that time gouda or gonor came inside so patanjali was happy to see at least one student survived so he said why did you go over is i don't understand anything so i went out so i said i am going to teach you but because you went out you will become a brahma rashas afterwards so he taught mahabhashyam to gouda but eventually gouda became a brahma rashas going further what happened gouda says i have become brahma rashas what do i do now how do i get relief is there a nivaranam pariharam and gouda did not know how to do it patanjali advises him don't worry there is a solution if you find a, a, a student as your disciple then you will be released from this curse but gouda said i how do i find a student who is eligible and patanjali helps him also how to do a test and then uh, you know uh, select a proper candidate what is a test so i have to tell you something in sanskrit now in sanskrit there is something called pratyaya what we can say in english a suffix to a word you know uh, in tamil you got viguti or vikruti in sanskrit now within the pratyayas there are many types one is called nishta which is a past principle the root of the original word should be a verb when the suffix or nishta is added it should become object of a verb i will give you some examples like Bush means to eat. In fact, bhojanam comes from that. You know, Tamil also is a bhujitan, right? They all come from the root bhuj. Now, when nishta or a suffix is added to the bhuj, becomes buktam. Buktam means that which is eaten or edible, you can say. Similarly, you have the word raktam. that which is red in fact the word tamil word ratham comes from that rak is the root then you add tam there it becomes ratham likewise you have siktam means that which is wet sik is to wetten and therefore when you add tam to it it becomes what is wet so you have many such words where you add tam to the root verb it becomes uh, a, a noun or uh, an object but there is an exception to the rule and that is the root is tak or pach when you add the suffix it is not pakkam it is pakkam it is va- that is an ex- exception pakkam meant that which is cooked you know and even tamil also you say pakkam right in fact uh, you say nalla pakkuma pesrare if one is uh, talking intelligently now when you boil rice and vegetables it becomes pakkam it becomes digestible so the exclusive rule in pani the yakarana of nishta pratyaya he said you do the test and one who passes this test she can become a disciple so gouda said okay let me go and when he goes he goes to india region why because 
it is the center of uh, india you can see you know the northern and southern regions therefore most of the people travel there from north to south and from south to north and so on so you can catch more people so whenever a brahmin came gaudapada is simply come down and then he assumed the form of a brahmin himself and then asked the traveler this question on grammar but none qualified he was getting disappointed years were going by some people who knew the answer but got confused you know uh, let's say you ask the pronunciation of uh, but and cut you see it is b u t but and c u t cut and suddenly ask what is the spelling uh, what is uh, how do you say but they will say p a t out of confusion so even if they knew it they could not give the correct answer and immediately gauda the brahma rakshasa pounced on the traveler and ate him up but one day a smart man comes his name was chandra sarma he came from kashmir and who was chandra sarma according to patanjali vijaya this is uh, work of ramapada dikshitar he says chandra sarma is none other but patanjali himself because patanjali you know he, he was knowing that uh, gauda is not able to find a proper uh, disciple so he said, i will go myself so he incarnated as chandra sharma and he went there because he didn't want the mahabhashyam to be lost forever so when he came and the same questions were put this chandra sharma was so smart he answered correctly so gaura pada he said i have now got a eligible student he is going to be my disciple so he teaches in mahabhashyam now gauda is sitting on top of a tree and chandra sharma has to write down the lessons there was no paper in those days you know so he what he did he just uh, took some leaves and out of his blood he wrote it wrote it the instruction went on for 9 days or so without sleep or food at all and after the instructions were over godavada said you can go now and chandra sharma also said i'll go he gathered all the leaves and he went and slept somewhere because he was tired and he found that while he was uh, sleeping one goat came and eat part of the leaves so what is left out is what we got as mahabhasham so much of it is already eaten away but whatever was left out he took up that bundle he went to ujjain now when he reached ujjain he was so tired he fell unconscious outside the house of a merchant now the daughter of the merchant she took pity on him and he says look at him this seems to be a brahma tejas ready and face and uh, he is just lying unconscious so she started treating him with you know put some curd rice on his body and then uh, he got the nourishment uh, through the skin and then after some time chandra sharma woke up and he kind of uh, got well so he said okay thank you very much i'll go now but the person came out he said no no how can you go my daughter has served you and now you have to marry her she said how can i marry i don't want to marry no no i'll go to the king for justice he went to the king and the king he saw chandra sharma he said he seems to be a very very bright person i have also got a daughter so let him marry my daughter also and the minister came and then he is right to have a daughter and eventually chandra sharma ended up marrying all the three so that is what happened when chandra sharma got married but he continued his work because he knew all the dharma shastras and he had four sons all of them were intelligent and then uh, they were scholars varuchi was one vikramaditya the great king and patti is minister in bartuhari these were four sons he got and all of them they were very well versed in shastras in fact uh, Vikramaditya story we all know. Bhatti, the Kartya, and I became the minister. And Bhartrhari wrote a, a grammatical masterpiece called Ravanavada. 
Now, after some years, what happened? Chandra Sharma continued his journey to find his teacher, Gaudapada. Finally, he meets him and he was in the Himalayas at the time, uh, in Madhrika Ashramam. And uh, Gaudapada, in the meantime, wrote uh, Mandika Karika, you know, a commentary on uh, Mandika Upanishad. It's also known as Gaudapada Karika. Uh, it is a treatise in Agama Shastram. And he was busy doing that work. When Chandra Sharma came there, he got overjoyed. Look at my own Israel, who's come here all the way. So he blessed him and then he said, what do you want? He said, I want to become a sannyasi. He said, okay. So he initiated him into this life of sannyasi. And then from then on, Chandra Sharma's name got replaced with the name Govinda Bhagavad Pada. You know, Krishna is known as Jagat Guru. He said in the first slogan, right? Guru for the entire world. Govinda is a very special name of Krishna. And Acharya, our great Acharya, had a very special attachment to the name Govinda as it was the name of Krishna. The Jagat Guru. And also the name of his direct guru. So he sang Baja Govindam, Baja Govindam. So our Acharya, Adi Shankar Acharya, had a special attachment to Govinda. Krishna, which was also his family deity in Kali. So while he was there in, uh, with his teacher in uh, Madhika Ashrama, Vyasa Maharishi came there. And uh, he asked Govinda Pagatpada, after some time you go to the bank of Narmada River and you wait for the arrival of the disciple called Shankara, who is none else but the incarnation of Lord Shiva himself. So now we are going to enter the second part of my presentation. It is starting with Shambhu becomes Shankara. With Dakshina Amarti, you see he is sitting silently under the banyan tree, full of compassion. You know, at one time, the Devas were uh, very unhappy at the way things were going on in Pulokam. On one side, you had uh, non-Vedic uh, religious heads like Buddha, who were all vilifying the Vedas, condemning Karma Anushtanam. And there were people like uh, Kapalika, who followed barbaric ways, executing people, offering heads in sacrifice. There was a multiplicity of uh, kind of spurious cults at that time. In fact, there were 72 different factions at that time with lots of clashes between them. So the Devas went to Kailasham and prayed to Shambhu and complained to him. Sutyacharam parityajya vityacharam samasritaha Sutyachara means the Vedic ways. Paritaja is getting reduced. And Vityachara means improper contract. Samasrita has increased a lot. Therefore, they pray Tad Bhavan Loka Rashtartam Utsadaya Nikilan Kalan. Vartmas tapayatu, notam, jagatyena sukam prajayat. It means uh, you have to destroy all the people going the wrong way and protect the world. Jagatyena sukam prajayat. Loka rashtartam. The Vedic way should be re established. 
you have to establish that birth was tapayatu so they made an appeal to dakshana murti called shambhu shambhu murti sitting silently no by sitting silently how can you do anything you have to be active you have to go here and there you have to move around and uh, do a lot of work so oh, he said okay i will fulfill your wishes and then there is a verse here you can see on the slide which explains uh, shambhu's role here agyanantar kahana patitan आत्म विद्योपदेशाचार्य the form of sankara charati bhuvane sankara chare rupe he is moving about in present tense you know he is moving about in the form of sankara charya in this world described in the present tense they they feel as if they are witnessed directly who is moving about shambhu murti shambhu murti the murti of shiva known as shambhu now important name of shiva is shambhu it is always a convention to say shambhu mahadeva right ambal The wife of Shambhu is called Shambhavi, and Sri Ram knows it very well. Shambhu Murti. What is the meaning of Shambhu? How did he get this name? Shambhu means eternal joy, happiness. In Rudram we say, isn't it? Sancha be, Maya cha be. Two types of happiness: some Maya's materialistic and spiritual happiness. But when some alone is mentioned. it is the happiness of liberation it is not just material or spiritual it is the eternal joy and who means the place of creation bhuvanam now since this atmaya is the place where we are all created is called bhulokam bhu to create the place where the eternal happiness is produced that is called shambhu parmeshwara in the form of dakshina murti he is the fountain head of this bliss he is called shambhu mukta maunam whatever you know bhulato nishpatanti whatever sham means alamaram in tamil you know banyan tree patasya patrasya puteshaya nam alam mukundam manasasparami patasya patrasya puteshaya nam you know you see balakrishna on the alaya so in the dakshina murti is seated at the base of the banyan tree so it was what a which a be mula sthita mula means root and he is silent agya tanta kahana patitan agyanam means you know that people in ignorance and it is They are all in the middle of a dense forest of ignorance. Yeah, if you are getting caught in a forest itself, it is difficult. But how difficult it will be or painful if the star forest also starts burning or catching fire? Like, for example, in California, what is happening? People are getting roasted with fire, and homes are getting burned. So the reference here is. means the forest fire of worldly life. No, we want to get rid of that fire. How to do that? You need water, right? In Devalogan, Rajna Murti sitting in cool, fountain head of. spring of liberated happiness with all knowledge and if this fire has to put out it should then only with that water how to bring that level of water to this world to the level of ignorant human society it can't be done by sitting under a tree 
it could be only done by somebody who has the knowledge and the ability to move around the country and transform it with his skills like what is happening in india today one single person prime minister modi changing transforming everything going around he's traveling so much and working 18 hours a day something like that you know somebody has to do that because the whole place was in a mess so shambhu incarnate such shankara going further now we are going to talk about the birth of shankara there is a village you know kaladi is very close to alvai station in uh, kerala i think it's about 30 miles from situ now in that village there was a pious couple by the name of shivaguru aryamba and they had abundant devotion to ishwar a very pious couple they had everything but not a child so they went to tirchu there is a shiva temple and they started praying to the ishwara there to bless them with the sun you know tirchu was very well known as a shiva kshetra it's called vrushachalam uh, vrusham means you know referring to uh, nandikeshwara vrushabham and vrusham both are same the swami is called vrishabaruda also called as vadaknath vadaknath and they call vadaknath is sitting on a nandi nandi is also present inside the temple normal people there and uh, among all the shiva temples tirchu is probably the biggest and most important so lord shiva heard their prayers and he appeared in the dream of both shivaguru and aryamba and he offered a choice either you get one brilliant maha buddhiman son who will be short lived but you can also have another choice of numerous sons who will be kind of mediocre and dull and shivaguru is right i will consult my wife and tell you you can understand what an amount of respect men gave women in those days both of them discussed and they told ishwara please don't test her by asking such a question you know what to do you can do anything as per your wish and ishwara was very pleased and said i am blessing you with a son i will incarnate myself but i will be short lived maybe only eight years now this incarnation which happened on the most auspicious time in the year nandana on vishaka suddha panch in murtam kal abhijit murtam the vaisaga sutta panchami is the panchami that falls during what he called the, the, the waxing period of moon and it all uh, occurs after the new moon in chaitra month and abhijit murtam is chapas to the noon time you know when the sun is at the highest point it is the time the murtam which is capable of ensuring success <coughs> the day it was shiva dar star star of shiva so just like shri ramachandra murthy acharya took birth at the rare time when five planets were in exalted position nothing equal to the auspicious tapunya kalam of shankara's birth so he you have to see the acharya's father's name was shivaguru very appropriate name isn't it he was not only one's guru but also the father mahapriya says shivaguru is a name which is not uh, uh, prevalent or popular in kerala it is uh, from tamil nadu probably shivaguru hailed from kumbakonam or some place and likewise acharya's father's name was aryamba and as our acharya himself was distinguished all mothers he is arya and his mother is aryamba isn't it very nice name for his parents so the divine incarnation took place and uh, everybody was happy it's all mentioned in shankar vidyam that several uh, uh, very auspicious uh, omens appeared throughout the world at the time and shiva guru performed the jata karma nam karma and uh, he named the child as shankar 
Now, why did he give the name as Shankara? You know, when uh, our elders do something, it is not uh, just a premeditated act, what do you call Buddhi Purvamala. Uh, there may be many inner meanings to it. So, when Sambhu incarnated as Shankara, one who has to do a lot of activities and uh, who is going to do a lot of good, Sankaram Loka Sankaram, right? Sam Karoti Sankaraha. Sam Karoti Iti Sankaraha. He has the name Sankara because he is creating some which is happiness. That is one reason, but there is another reason which Mahabharya mentioned as uh, choosing a name based on one's Paksha and Titi. He mentioned this as, you know, Katapiyadi Sankhya. It's a system. Which is uh, which determines the numbers based on letters, you know, like ka, nga, cha, nga, and all that. You know, in uh, the US, in telephones, you have numbers linked to alphabets, right? Like A, B, C for one and so on. So these uh, alphabets are linked to uh, numbers, and uh, in this system, they try to translate your word into numbers. Like, for example, you take the word Jaya. Um, jaya means auspicious or victory. In terms of numbers, in the Kadapayadi Sankhya, it's Jaya denotes eight and one. And according to the rules of the system, the digits go reverse, which means it becomes 18. So when you say 18 in Jaya, it's a number denoting victory. So that is a, a very great kind of uh, formula. And uh, Mahapurya mentions about a book by name Punya Sloka Mandiri, which you know, uh, lists in serial order the dates of attainment of Siddhi of all Acharyas of Kanchi Madam, including that of uh, Adi Shankara. So that is uh, another method by which uh, the date of birth is determined by uh, the Kanchi Madam. Uh, he says in this book, uh, the name, uh, native place, location where they attend Siddhi. And uh, it's all given up to the 55th Acharya. And according to this book, uh, our uh, Acharya attends Siddhi in the year 2625 of Kali Yuga. And Kali Yuga is believed to have started in the year 31302, 3102 BC. That corresponds to 477 BC, the Christian era. So if his age was 32 at that time, his birth was 477 plus 32. And therefore, Acharya's birth was probably in 509 BC. So Mahapriva cites many other references and evidences in determining the, the birth and life period of Adi Shankara. In fact, there is a complete chronology of Acharya's provided by the Kansimat to support this life period. We are not going into those details. But we will see what are the achievements of Shankara. That is more important. But Shankara was a child prodigy. Now, legend says, Aryamba, mother of Adi Shankara, used to take birth in River Purna, which is now called Periyar. And she had to walk a long distance. And uh, Adi Shankara, who was a child, he thought he will pray to Lord Krishna, his family deity, to divert the river to flow near his home so that, you know, mother need not walk all the way. In fact, his prayers were heard and the river changed its course. It followed little Shankara's footmarks, you know, from the river to his home and uh, it started flowing right outside his house. And that's the place it becomes Kaladi, meaning footprints. In addition, you know, there was a, a geologist, very reputed geologist who visited Kanji from Meta or Periva. Mahapariva, he asked him his skills and he says, I can determine the age of anything by doing what is called carbon testing. You know, a sample of the particular material stated in it, the, the content of carbon in it will determine how old it is. So Mahapariva said, yeah, You could do me a favor. You do a carbon dating test on the sand from the river Purna, take it one from the 
place where it is flowing before entering Kaladi and the other location at Kaladi itself and bring me the results. You know, surprisingly, when the results came, the sand taken from the first location had an age of more than 100,000 years. Whereas the sand collected from the second location at Kaladi was close to about 2,500 years, which means the river was really diverted. So this is a scientific test which established the flow of river and also the kind of uh, date of birth or the uh, age where uh, uh, the age when uh, Adi Shankara was born. The other miracle he did was to compose Kanakadara Sotram. You know, Shankara, he had open air at the age of five and as a brahmachari, he used to go and get Bhikshai from the, the family nearby. And once she saw Bhikshai from uh, a woman who was extremely poor, you can see the slide here. She didn't want to send the boy, such a beautiful boy, empty-handed. And she gave him the last piece of Nellikai, as they call it, Amla fruit, which she had at home for Badasi Parana, you know. And Shankara, he saw the poverty of this lady. And immediately she composed a Kanakadara Stavam to seek Mahalakshmi's blessing. Angam Harehe Pulaka Bhushana Master Janti Ganganeva Mukula Varanam Tamalam Angi Kratakila Bibhutta Pangalila Wangal Yadadas to Mamaman Radeva Tayaha. So begins the Kanakadara Stavam. No, the, the special thing about it is it is the first Sudhi ever made by Acharya when he was five years old. And Mahalakshmi, you know, he came in Asaniri and she said, sorry, I can't help this couple. Because they did so much of papam in their earlier births, you know. They have to suffer. But, you know, little Shankara, he didn't say, all right, thank you very much and go away. No. He pursued, he pleaded. He pleaded with Mahalakshmi on behalf of that lady. There is an audio of Mahapariva's voice on this, you know, uh, this particular slogan where it says, are craving for wealth like the Sadaka Pakshi. You know, Sadaka Pakshi waits for rainwater. It will keep on looking up, you know, so that rainwater will come. Like that, these people are longing for little wealth like Sadaka Pakshi for rain. Well, I agree. Dushkarma dharmam apaniya chiraya duram. They had Dushkarma. They had uh, Papam and all that. But what about you? You are Tayana Bhavano Dirvanam Budaram. You are like the breeze of love and kindness. Please bring that cloud of Kadaksham with the help of that breeze. Dadya Tayanu Bhavano. And shower them with wealth. Dirvanam Budaram Dara. He means a prayer. He means a prayer. He and he showers them with Kanakadara. Such was the greatness of Acharya at such an young age. Then you know the story goes that one day he took a bath in the river and crocodile caught hold of Sankara and he cried out his mother. She came running, but she could not help. But Sankara then begged his mother, please allow me to take uh, Abhat Sanyasam. 
can i go to another janmam it may get 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 me some relief let me try so his mother aryamba says okay what to do and shankara he adopted apat sanyasam he escaped death then then he proceeds to achieve great milestones in a short span of 32 years then he meets his guru traveling to north and he meets uh, going the bhagat pada and going the bhagat pada says very nice but how do i know you are uh, so and so the give me an introduction and shankara composed the most beautiful and profound atpa shadakam are also called as nirvana shadakam going the bhagat pada accepts him as disciple and he initiates him into the maha vakyas you know all the shastras and uh, the name he continues even though he was granted sanyasi by his guru but he is a special case where the name continued even after becoming sanyasi sankara is a original name and he also continues to be sankara the reason uh, what periva says is that, that uh, govinda bhagavad pada must have thought no my disciple is uh, sankara from kairasam now this incarnation incarnation has taken place for the good of the world sang the loka sankaram so let me therefore not change the name sankara can continue and therefore he has not changed his name so that is an exception to the rule so after he mastered everything he goes and uh, goes to banaras and uh, he writes uh, very authoritative commentaries uh, bhashyam and brahma sutra and he started up preaching the advaita doctrine in varanasi now let's go to the next slide he has as he was walking he meets an untouchable for the uh, chandala and he says just move away and the chandala he questions him he walks with the four dogs annamaya annamaya athava chaitanya deva chaitanya yativara दूरी कर्तुम वांचसी किम द्रोही गच्छा गच्छे इति योर क्वेश्चन यू आर आस्किंग इज इट फ्रॉम वन बॉडी अन्नमया मेड ऑफ फूड टू अनदर बॉडी मेड ऑफ फूड अथवा आर इज इट फ्रॉम माय कॉन्शियसनेस और आत्मा फ्रॉम माय आत्मा टू योर आत्मा यति वरम द बेस्ट ऑफ ऋषिज यू आर और द एसेटिक्स दूरी कर्तम इसे गोवे गोवे किम द्रोही गच्छे गच्छे इति व्हिच वन शुड गो अवे बाय सेइंग गो अवे गो अवे डाउन शंकर और सरंडी ही रियलाइजेस दिस पर्सन इज नॉट शिवा हिमसेल्फ व्हेन ही कंपोज्ड द मनीष पंचकम मनीष पंचकम एंड प्रोस्ट्रेट गुरु नेक्स्ट ही गोस अ डिबेट विद मंडल मिश्रा मंडल मिश्रा वाज अ मैन हु फॉलोड मी वंस Vimana some means you know uh, kind of inquiry, very sacred inquiry. And what is that? It is on Vedas. So the Vimana Sagas only rituals matter. They are mentioned in the Vedas. They are very emphatic in one point that the Ishvara is not the one who dispenses the phalam or fruits of our action. It is only the Vedas. Whatever you do. But Shankara, he thinks differently. That he says, "Ishvara possesses all the lakshanas." What is described in the Vedas and the Brahma Sutra, and he says there can be no world without Ishvara, and it is wrong to maintain that our works are hindered by karma alone. It is Ishvara who has made this world, and it is one who awards the fruits. So he wanted to put his point across. So he meets Madan Masha. on the day he goes there is a gate uh, there was a shraddha on adar mishra's home a ritual and adishankara goes and jumps over the gate the jnana now the very interesting humorous conversation which i picked up from a marathi book titled you know sri shankara sare anche charitra 
Vasudeva Vishnakavi. So, Madhara Mishra, he sees the young shaven head uh, uh, sannyasi before him. And they, he doesn't like sannyasi because they have no karmas. So, he asked him, Kuto Mundi, from where is this Mottai coming? <laughs> Kuto Mundi means Mottai or shaven head. And uh, Acharya answered him, Agalan Mundi. Agalan Mundi means from the neck upwards. And Vishra says, Pantaste Prichate Maya. I asked the path. And Acharya again says, Kimaha Pantha. What did the path tell you? He meant that I asked the path. So, what did the path tell you? This is a humorous answer, you know. Now, Madhana Mishra gets angry. He says, Feedback him, Sura. How are you drunk? And Acharya says, Sura Svetaha. Now, Pita also means yellow. So what he says is, Pita Kim Sura means, he, he uh, assumes that he says, he is uh, the wine or uh, uh, the liquor uh, uh, yellow. He says, Sura Svetaha, wine is white. So this is a very interesting conversation in uh, Sagarasarya Charitra. So the debate goes on 15 days and the judge is the uh, wife of Mantana Mishra. And Shankara eventually wins it. Mishra's wife, Uday Bharati, Saraswani, she is an avatar of Saraswati, and she serves as a judge. Shankara wins the debate, and then they go further, Sureshwara and Shringiri. Vandana Mishra becomes Sureshwara, a disciple of Shankara, and she and Uday Bharati, they follow Shankara to south. And Uday Bharati tells Shankara, I will follow you, but if you look back, I'll stop. And when uh, they come to the confluence of Tunga and Bhadra with Tunga Bhadra, you know, there is sand there, and Adi Shankara was listening to the sound of the gurus or anchors coming from Udre Bharati, but suddenly, because of sand, you know, the sound stops. And he is wondering why it has stopped. He looks back, and then Saraswati stops there. In that place, our Mahapiriva says is Sringeri. And going further, Adi Shankara starts traveling everywhere. He was only eight or nine years old when he started traveling, and then he went on all across India, entire Bharat on foot, preaching Advaita, Dharma, tried to visit Kailasa. There is a very nice verse about his talent. Ashtavarse Chaturvedi, Dvadase Sarma Sastravit, Shodase Kritaman Pasham, Dvatram Se Munirabhyagat, Ashtavarse Chaturvedi. At the age of eight, he knew all the four Vedas. Dvadase at the age of twelve, Sarma Sastram, he knew. Shodase Kritaman Pasham, when he was sixteen, he wrote commentaries, Pasham. Dvatram Se Munirabhyagat. By the time he was 30, he was a complete Muni, knowing everything. In a short span of 32 years, he achieved so many things. And that is the greatness of uh, our Sankaracharya. Then he went to, you know, Kedarnath and then went to Kailasha, taking his yogic sarira, a darshan of Lord Parameshwara, composed Shiva Mahima Slogam. Got five lingams, particular lingams, Saundarya Lahari from him. Of course, part of it was snatched away by Nandi Deva. But you all know, whatever we got, Hunter Slogam, the Saundarya Lahari is a treasure. And he visited many, many places like uh, Sri Sailam, Chidambaram, Anjivaram, Tirudamardur, Tirvane Kaval, and above all, Kailasha. And during all Travel, he countered those 72 factions of Hinduism, unified them into six main categories, what he called Shanmata Stapakar. Shaivam, Shauram, Shaktam, Vaishnavam, Kaumaram, Kanapatyam, and established as the four bottoms across the country. And he founded the philosophy, the main work of Advaitam, a non duality. Now, you can go on talking about Anshagra, the endless, you know. First, the Advaita philosophy, where the individual soul 
Jivatma and the infinite soul Paramatma Brahman, they are all identical. We are part of the divine. We are just a small part of the Paramatma. So the real identity of the individual of the Jivatma is nothing than other than the Paramatma himself. That is the core belief. And what that at least 116 different kinds of those Bhashyas and 10 Upadhanshad, Brahma Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, wrote a commentary on uh, Vishnu Sahasranamam and many particulars, you know, uh, lots of Sotram, Annapurna Sotram, Bhavana Bhujanga Sotram, Kanagadara Sotram, Pandrakashtakam, Dashnamuti Sotram, Ganesha Pancharatram, Govindashtakam, Hanumat Pancharatram, Vinachapatram, Subhanamuni Bhujanga Sotram, all Sotram, so many of them. So his name is kind of yet in the history of our religion for reviving the Sanatana Dharma. But for Adi Shankara, we would not be here talking about this Guru Parampara. No historical person exercised a, a deeper or stronger influence on Indian thinking and intellect and uh, the spiritual life of Sri Adi Shankara. Indian philosophy, culture, poetry, literature, everything revealed the impact of his teaching. A philosopher, a poet, a reformer, organizer, teacher, integrator, and so on. No wonder Adi Shankara is called Jagat Guru. We are all fortunate to have such a great person in our Guru Parampara. That is why he called the great Guru Parampara. Now we are coming towards the current. Sadashika Samaram Mam, Sankara Acharya Maddamam, I have talked. Asmata Acharya Parantam. They are existing. They have unbroken line of 70 Acharyas. 68th Acharya, Tandasvika Saraswati Swami, Mahapiriva. He was the head of the mud for 87 years, the longest. And he was world renowned. He entered the Madam barely when he was 13. And he shone as Acharya for 87 years. He did uh, Kumbhavishayam for Akhilandeshwari, Thirumane Kaval. Then he repaired the, or fixed the Tatanga for Akhilandeshwari. Made Vijay Yatra for 21 years in, across India, walking all the way. Held in great esteem by Maharaja. Mohan Malavya, Banaras University, host of scholars and foreign dignitaries, everybody, ardent devotees. You can see so many of them and so many experiences now on the internet. Now, these lectures are all compiled into seven volumes of Daivat and Kural, which was now which is available in English also. And he established many organizations for study of Vedam, Ashram, Many social institutions also. The 69th Acharya, Sri Jayantara Swami, he took over in 1984 and he delivered a lot of religious discourses involved in some various spiritual social activities. And under his guidance, Madam started many schools and uh, hospitals. He traveled with uh, our Mahapariva initially and then, you know. He led uh, lots of yatras across India to spread the awareness of Sanatana Dharma. And the current Acharya, you all know his activities, how busy he is. He is spreading our Sanatana Dharma, our great culture in India and foreign lands also, including US. KKSF is formed and we are active because of his encouragement. And he knows many languages, including Tamil, Telugu, Hindi, Sanskrit and so on. And he's fully shouldering the responsibility of steering the madam, which is involved, you know, in string of spiritual, service, health, all kinds of activities. Such is the greatness of our Guru Parampara, starting with Sadashava until the present Acharyas. So now we are almost coming to the end of our presentation. Now, oh, this is uh, the uh, uh, Acharyas in the picture on the right side. You see Adi Shankara 
of the center with his four disciples we had the four atoms across the country and the pictures are around all the acharyas in the lineage of the great guru parampara to them to this parampara i offer my humble namaskarams when i am concluding the presentation you see the footprints here the paduka here on that i bow keep my head and offer my most humble ananta koti namaskarams to this great guru parampara so with that we come to the end of this presentation and thank you all very much again once again namaskarams to all jay jay shankar har har shankar jay jay shankar har har shankar jay jay shankar har har shankar namaskarams to all Chetu, you can. You want to give a concluding remark? Yes, I am sorry. I was muted. Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Jai Jai Shankara Hara Shankara. Thank you, uh, Sri Subhi Mama, for a very, for a very extensive, although a short one, a peek into our Guru Parampara, a very rich heritage of our Guru lineage. and starting from lord shiva starting from lord narayana bringing the concept of advaitam there and um, then through adi shankara and the wonderful account of the chidambaram uh, patanjali history and and uh, the uh, brahma rakshasa avata uh, uh, or tenure of uh, gaudapada and then adi shankara's brief life history Uh, with his with all his various works and compositions and then uh, offering a glimpse into our present acharyas the trivartis of uh, sri mahapriva sri pulapriva and the current priva uh, just a few other comments i would like to make mama is has been we have been very fortunate to have his had his satsangam uh and as well as mommy's for past many years here in chicago area mama's knowledge is very widespread as is obvious from here extensive knowledge of the spiritual aspects of our sanatan dharma as well as his his ability to use media well, we saw this wonderful presentation uh, this is so lucid so illustrative um so easy that i'm uh, I think we should take this up for our Shankara Bala Vihar and use this presentation, or or invite Mama to give this presentation to our children, uh, for our Guru Parampara. That's that's my immediate thought. But Mama's use of media um, brings about the points very nicely, and we didn't feel the last hour, hour and a half pass by, pass at all. So uh, uh, I would like to. emphasize that he has great command over the subject uh, as well as the fact that he was able to bring a lot of the uh, compositions he was able to sing for example uh, papara sam shivan composition uh, gopala krishna bharati composition uh, amazing um, besides this on a side note you know, he said mama was introduced as hailing from maharajpuram uh, he has also told me that he is neighbors to uh, the great family of maharaj param santanam uh, the great uh, musical uh, uh, legend of course maharaj from vishwanath iyer and uh, and his family so um, no wonder uh, we we were treated to some wonderful uh, <coughs> music musical recitation as well of the various shlokas and compositions and uh, we are indeed fortunate that uh, on the eve of a very auspicious adi amavasya Uh, we were able to uh, get a little bit of a glimpse, um, or get a little bit of a, of a taste of the nectar of our uh, Guru Parampara and our Sanatan Dharma. Uh, Mama, we are 
extremely grateful to you for for bringing this great work and sharing with us uh, Mama's various extensive works on social media, including his website, including his YouTube um, tutorial channels, and so on. Tutorial uh, videos are very useful. Those of you who uh, who are not um, uh, visited them, please do uh, try them out. Um, on behalf of KKS of Mama, our uh, extreme gratitude for bringing this wonderful uh, presentation on our Guru Parampara. Uh, we bow to you, we bow to our Acharyas. Lastly, we want to thank all of our Satsangam members who are joining today, whether it is on Facebook, on our Facebook uh, group page, or whether it is on YouTube, or those who will be watching YouTube recordings, please do uh, uh, encourage all your other uh, family members to watch as well. And uh, with Parivar's grace, we hope to continue the Kamakoti Paramedic program on a regular basis. Please watch out for your watch out uh, for future emails about future programs. Once again, uh, Sri Mama, thanks on behalf of KKSF. I would like to thank you and then I also like to thank our volunteers who put this wonderful program together. Jai Shankara, Hara Hara Shankara. Thank you.